So what I want to do is I want to map this frequency of this low cut filter to the macro one. Sam Smyers here. Today I'll talk about how to use macro mapping in Ableton Live. Macro mapping can be used to manipulate multiple parameters within an instrument rack or an audio effects rack in Ableton Live. This can seem like a complicated process, but I'm going to break it all down for you in this video and show you how simple it can be. Now, if you enjoy this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos I put out. And it will also help other music producers and artists find videos like this to help them with their music production. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to load an EQ8 onto a audio track. I have this guitar loop audio track and I'm going to load this EQ8 onto it. I want to go ahead and put the EQ8 into an audio effects rack and I'm going to right click and go to group. You could also hit command G to put it into an audio effects rack. I'm going to go ahead and make this number one filter into a low cut and then I'm going to click on this button here that looks like a knob and that's going to open up my macros menu. So what I want to do is I want to map this frequency of this low cut filter to the macro one. And to do that, I click on this map button and then I can click on the frequency parameter. And now it says map here on macro one and then I can click map. And now the number one frequency filter is mapped to that macro one. Up here is the macro mapping browser and we can see that we have the one frequency of the EQ8 mapped to this macro one. These are the minimum and maximum settings of the parameter. So as you can see, it goes all the way down to 10 hertz, all the way up to 22 kilohertz. I can actually change this. So if I want the max to be something like five kilohertz, then I could just put in five kilohertz and that will be the max. And so basically, instead of when I turn this knob, it going all the way up to 22 kilohertz, it's only going to go up to five kilohertz. So as you can see here, this knob is at five kilohertz and it stops at five kilohertz. Otherwise, if I had this at 22 kilohertz, then the knob would go the entire range of the frequency spectrum. So I wanna leave this at five kilohertz. I could also right click and then there's an option to invert the range. And what that does is it inverts the setting. So if I decrease the knob, then the low cut goes up. And if I increase the knob, then the low cut goes down. So let me go ahead and turn this invert off to have it how it was originally. And I'm going to click this map button again. I can also right click on this macro now and I can change the color. So let's say I wanna make it red and I can also rename this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create this effect called a washout and a washout effect is something that you can use to transition in between different sections of your song. And so a washout effect has a low cut and it also increases the reverb and the amount of reverb. So it's going to increase the decay of the reverb and also the wet setting of the reverb. So I'm going to call this washout. And then I'm going to insert a reverb into this audio effects rack. And what I want to do is I want to map this dry and wet knob to the macro one. And so I can also just right click and now there is an option to map to wash out. And so I could either go to edit macro map and go ahead and go through the same process as we did before, or I can do this map to wash out and then it, it automatically maps it to the wash out. So I can go back to this macro mappings browser and I can see where I have the minimum and maximum, and I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that alone. I also want to map the decay time to the macro one. So I'm gonna go ahead and map this decay time to the macro one. However, for the decay time, I do want the minimum to be at least one or two seconds. So I'm going to increase the minimum all the way up to about one second. And then for the max, I don't want it to be 60 seconds. So I'm just gonna decrease that to about 20 seconds. So now that I have three different parameters mapped to this macro one, there is one more thing that I want to map and that is going to be a compressor. So let me go ahead and get out of the mapping browser. Then I'm gonna to go to a compressor and insert a compressor. And for the compressor, 
what I want to happen is that as the reverb gets higher and the dry and wet ratio of the reverb increases, the level actually decreases. So I want to decrease the threshold of the compressor while keeping this makeup gain on because then it will increase the level of this washout sound. So what I'm going to do is I want to map the threshold to the macro one. So I'm going to right click and map this to washout or macro one. And now the threshold is mapped. However, I have this threshold going to be the minimum is at negative infinity and the max is at 60 B. So for the threshold, what I actually want to do is invert the range so that the minimum is going to be at zero DB. And then the max I'm going to set to something like negative three DB so that whenever I increase this knob, you can see that the threshold will go down as I increase the knob. So as I increase the knob, you have this in threshold decreasing. So let's go ahead and test out this effect. I have four different parameters working from this one knob. And so this is an easy way to control multiple parameters with one knob and create interesting effects. And it's also useful for simplifying your automation. So instead of automating all four of these parameters on four different effects, I can just go to right click, show automation, and then automate this macro washout effect. So let me go ahead and play this sample and you'll hear this guitar loop. And then I have a section with just a guitar and then another section with a kick in the guitar. So it's going to be essentially like you have the guitar and it goes into like a drop section. So I want to create this washout effect and I'm going to automate this washout knob. So it's going to rise up toward the end and then it's all of a sudden going to cut out. So let's go ahead and create this automation. The knob will rise up and I'll rise up even more. Stop at about, let's do around here and all of a sudden cut out and we'll hear that effect in action. <laughs> So there you have it, that is that washout effect. And if I ever want to change any of these mappings, I can click on this mapping button, then go to the mapping browser and I can hit delete if I wanna delete them, or I can just right click on one of the parameters that is mapped and unmap from the washout or the macro one. So there you have it, that is how you use macro mapping in Ableton Live. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos I do and it will also help other music producers and artists find videos like this to help them with their music production. Thank you very much guys for watching. I'll see you next time.